The Bible says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. In this video, we will hear Naval Goddard discuss important issues. He will discuss entering a state similar to sleep can change your life. It changed forever my perspective on reality. If you've heard any of Naval's lessons, you'll know that he was a man of faith and belief. He did not, however, believe in God in the traditional sense. Instead of praying to a higher power or begging for something, Naval believed that our imagination was God and that God lived through our imagination. Naval simply relaxed himself to a sleep-like state, essentially self-hypnosis, and imagined that his prayers and wishes had already been answered. In a short 10-30 to 30 second scene, he would imagine and act out that he already had what he desired. In his imagination, he made everything as vivid and real as possible. Also, as previously stated, be cautious about who you discuss your desires with as your logical mind can get in the way and be an impediment to creating the life you desire. Not only that, but the logical minds of others can also bring you down. So don't go around telling people who have no idea who the hell Neville Goddard is about your visualization plans. They will look at you as if you are from space if you use Neville's principles and go on your dream vacation to Amalfi. Find a nice community of people who are already using Naval's principles to create their ideal life and draw inspiration from them. Before we continue, let's let Naval speak for himself. If you enjoy videos like these, make sure to click the bell icon and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to pay close attention. Enjoy! With God, all things are possible. I don't think you'd be here if you did not believe in God and a God to whom all things are possible. But maybe we stop right there and we separate man from God. And my purpose is to show you that we are not two, that we are one. That God actually became man, that man may become God. So let us now tonight give you my reasons for my claims. Return to the book of John, the Gospel of John. And we are told that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, that's a mistranslation. The word translated among is the Greek preposition in, within. The Word became flesh and dwelt within us, in us. John use the plural us for the nature whereof we consist. That the word of God, which is defined in scripture as the creative power of God and the wisdom of God, did not take upon itself some one person among men. For then that one assumed would have advanced and no more. But Christ to save all did not make this man or that man his habitation, but dwelt in us. That same creative word that created the universe and sustains it dwells in us. Therefore with God all things are possible, and therefore with man all things are possible. So he states it in one book, Matthew, with God all things are possible, but in Mark he states it all things are possible to him, meaning man, who believes. Can man believe? So this creative word is in us. Well, what is this creative word? It's your own wonderful human imagination. That's Christ in man. Man is all imagination, and God is man, and exists in us, and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination. And that is Christ himself, the divine body, Jesus. We are his members. So when you say, I am, that's him. Now, can you believe that you are now the man that you would like to be? Though at the moment of your assumption, reason denies it, and your senses deny it. Only just start it. But if you're right. 
Can you really conceive a scene? A scene which, if true, would imply the fulfillment of your dream. Yes, imagine it. Certainly you can imagine it. But the problem is, would you believe it? Would you believe in the reality of the thing imagined? If I can this very moment imagine myself into a state, any state at all, and dwell in it. Well, now, what is dwelling in it? Well, I am dwelling in it. Well, that's Christ. And that is the resurrecting power of the universe. So if I remain in a state, I will resurrect it and objectify it in my world. But I have to select it and enter the state. If the spectator could enter into any of these states in his imagination, approaching the state on the fiery chariot of his contemplated thought, what would it be like if it were true? How would I feel if I were now the man that I would like to be? How would I know that I could become it? Well, I first, as I assume that I am it, let me think of my friends. Those who really would rejoice with me were it true. Let me imagine that I am seeing them in my mind's eye. How do they see me? If what I am assuming is true, they should see me as I am seeing myself. And if they are friends, they should rejoice with me. So let me now assume that I am seeing, reflected on the face of a friend, that which, if I saw it, would imply he sees in me that which I have assumed that I am. Will that work? Try it. I tell you from my own personal experience it works. As we are told in Corinthians, do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail to meet the test. Now we are challenged. He said, come test yourself and see. Well, this is how I test myself. If Christ is in me and all things are possible to Christ, then I must find out who he is. Well, I have found him as my own wonderful human imagination. And because he dwells not only in me, he dwells in us, everything is possible to everyone in the world. And so you help man best by telling him who Christ is. You could give him all the things of the world that he needs. He'll come back for more tomorrow unless he knows who Christ is. You can give the entire world to any one of us. They'll spend it, waste it, if they don't know who they are. But tell him who he is. And he doesn't need anything more than the knowledge of who he is and the application of that knowledge. For we are the optimum power. It doesn't work itself. I can tell you that your imagination is Christ. And maybe you'll believe me. But unless you actually take it to the point of working upon it and operating it, it means nothing. Well, if this night I really believe it, I would not allow the sun to go down in my sleep unless I feel myself right into the situation of the wish fulfilled. It need not a wish for myself, it could be a wish for a friend, for everyone in my world, because Christ dwells in all, and Christ is the true identity of every man, then everyone must be myself pushed out. It can't be another if God is one. Therefore I tell myself, as the seeming other, what I would do were I you. And instead of giving him the thing that he needs physically, tell him how to get it for himself. What would you feel like if now you were the man that you want to be? How would you see the world if things were as you desire them to be? Now this is what I mean by living in the end. Robert Frost, just the year before he departed this fair, he wrote this story for Life Magazine. And he said the founding fathers did not believe in the future. What a shock that they did not believe in the future. They believed it in. He said, we are always imagining ahead of our evidence. And the most creative thing in man is to believe a thing in. They had no evidence to support their claim to democracy. They were under a king when they threw the king away and began to simply build a concept of the future. They did not believe that the mere passage of time would bring them that dream. They believed it in. And these men believed implicitly in the word of God. And they believed that if I know what I want when I pray, believe that I have received it and I will. Well, if that precept is true, literally true, to be accepted literally and fulfilled literally, well then what am I doing not believing? I should actually know exactly what I would like to be and discovering what I would like to be as against what I seem to be, dare to assume that I am it. And my assumptions are false. 
if persisted in, will harden into fact. That I know from my own experience. And I know it's a law. Therefore, if someone is not becoming the man that they would like to be, and they tell me, but I once imagined it and it didn't work, then what are you doing now? I'm still not imagining it. If imagining creates reality, what are you imagining? For if Christ is the only creative power in the universe, and I identify him with my own imagination, well then my imagination is creating reality. So what am I imagining? Pick up the morning's paper, and I'm fed with everything I should not feast upon. All the horrors of the world, all the negative states of the world. After having read it for an hour, then I must either regurgitate, or in some strange way rub it out, because I can't go along through life feeding upon such nonsense. But if I really know what I want, what you want, what we want, and persuade myself that we have it, if my premise is sound, that imagining creates reality, I should, in the not distant future, hear you tell me that it's worked for you, and the other one tells me, and I in turn tell you, and go through life sharing this marvelous news with others. So I say, live as though it were true. Just as though it were true. That passage of Shakespeare, we have been taught from the primal state that that, that he which is was wished until he were. Here we find it in Caesar. He which is was wished until he were. He wasn't born Caesar, the king. But here was an ambition fulfilled because he was wished into it. He desired it, lived in the state, and everything reshuffled itself to conform to that state to which he was faithful. I see it in my immediate circle. Those who you would not think for one moment would ever become prominent, but they desired to be prominent. Those who desire to be successful, as they conceive success, no two see success in the same manner. Some see it through the eyes of wealth, others through rising in some profession, others in some other manner. But whatever they conceive it to be, they can realize it. If night after night they sleep in the assumption that they are now what they would like to be. And so we go back that if the word is truly the word that creates the system of, in which we live, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. By him all things were made, and without him was not anything made that was made. No, not even the so-called unlovely things. For if all things were made, he has to be responsible for the unlovely things as well. So we are told in scripture, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. I create the blessing, I create the curses. But now I must choose life. Choose the lovely things, but don't say there's another creator. For if there's another creator, then we are in conflict. So my own imagination can conjure unlovely things if I dwell upon them, or the lovely things. But they can't be two gods. They can't be two creators. And if I can find that creator and identify him with my own wonderful human imagination, then I can't pass the buck. I can't turn to anything and blame it for the things happening in my life. But I know that many of us are not discriminating, and when we see our own harvest, we don't recognize it. We can conceive that we, in some strange manner, permitted these things to be entertained by us. But we did. It could not have come to pass in any other way. So if I believe it and accept it, well then I will live by it. And then when I know what I want for anyone, and this goes for everything in this world, whether now, this very moment, you desire happiness in marriage. You say, but there's no, not one person in my world that's eligible. I know no one. You don't have to know anyone. All you have to do is to decide within yourself what you want. Now, what would you do if it were true? Would you wear a ring on the one finger which would imply that someone places there one that you admire? Well then, wear it well. Don't wear a physical ring. Put it on just as though he had placed it there. And sleep feeling that which you are feeling as real. Don't say it's all imagination. Certainty is because all imagination is Christ. Therefore, it's all reality. 
So when you say, well, that's only my imagination. Well, you're just saying, well, that's only a thing called Christ. When you treat imagination that way. Is there anything in this world that wasn't first imagined? Name one thing or point out one thing in this world for me that is now considered to be real, that wasn't first only imagined. What is now proved was once only imagined. Type Amen if you feel abundant. Watch this important message right now.